Hello, I'm attorney Scott Lesowitz, and today we will be discussing whether video game videos on Twitch and YouTube constitute fair use. There really isn't any case law yet that directly deals specifically with fair use and video game playthrough video. And this gives me something to talk about with people at parties because I really, that's the closest thing I have to having anything interesting to say to anybody. Generally, I think that let's play type videos are almost never going to constitute fair use. And on the other hand, videos that illustrate something that teaches the, the viewer about the gameplay or that gives a review or criticism of the game is more likely to constitute fair use. So let's quickly take a step back in time to the early 1980s when Joe Biden had only been in the Senate for just over 10 years and I was still cute. Now, there were a number of cases where defendants, ones who were being sued for copyright infringement, that argued, hey, the audiovisual component, what the person sees on the screen and hears, is not subject to copyright protection by itself because the user largely controls what appears on the screen. It's not exactly the same for everybody. The courts rejected those arguments. It's safe to assume that a video game video will constitute copyright infringement unless there is a fair use defense. So let's look at fair use. 17 United States Code section 107 states, the fair use of a copyrighted work for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, including multiple copies for classroom use, scholarship or research is not an infringement of copyright. So section 107 goes on to list four factors that a court is to consider. The court doesn't just give each of the four factors a 25% weighting. The judge is to look at things holistically and preferably the judge makes his decision while meditating in a forest, preferably with his eyes closed barefoot while his deputy plays a flute. So I'm gonna start with the second factor because I wanna get that out of the way. That factor is kind of like your appendix it's not completely clear exactly what the second factor is supposed to do. It's not very important. The second factor is the nature of the copyrighted work. Since a, a video game is a creative work of fiction, probably this factor weighs a little bit for a finding of no fair use. All right, so now let's get back to the first fair use factor. The purpose and character of the use, including whether such use is of a commercial nature or it's for nonprofit educational purposes. So two quick points here. One is that just because a work is made for a commercial purpose does not mean that it's impossible for it to be fair use. So the second point here is that videos that are primarily focused on teaching the, the viewer about something regarding the game, like how to play it better, how to exploit a problem with the game, showing game hacks, etc. those are more likely to constitute fair use. I just don't see how Let's Play type videos could ever constitute fair use. So that takes us to the third fa fair use factor, which is the amount and substantiality of the portion used in relation to the copyrighted work as a whole. So the amount of video game footage used should be reasonable and close to just what's necessary to convey the teaching or whatever, you know, criticism. This is a good place to discuss uh, speedruns. I think most speedruns are not going to constitute fair use, largely because even though there can be an argument for some of them that the person is teaching about how to, you know, perform the level better or showing issues one might encounter, I think that the amount of footage used is probably going to be more than necessary for that. I think this is also a good place to discuss about videos featuring mods. If it's basically just a long let's play video of someone's mod, um, I think it probably will constitute infringement, not fair use. However, if the video is primarily focused on how to create the mod and the amount of video used is seemingly reasonable for that purpose, it, it very well might constitute fair use. I also like to say here that there's no magic amount of time, like for instance, if you use less than 15 seconds of a you know video or clip that that will constitute fair use or de minimis use that's not the case think about it this way you can't go cheat on your wife 
with your neighbor and then tell her, oh, well, I finished in less than 15 seconds, so it was okay, it was fair use. Okay, finally, the fourth factor is the effect of the use upon the potential market for or value of the copyrighted work. Now, this is an interesting one. The, the video game videos are not replacing the market for the video game, uh, and also, it, the videos probably help sell video games. It brings free uh, attention and advertising for the game and creates hype. However, the courts have found that the potential value or potential market that could be disrupted is the potential to license for a fee the right to use the work. I think video game companies can make an argument that, okay, well, we're not, we haven't been choosing to make our own video game playthrough videos, but we may very well plan on doing it. So with that, thank you. I hope you enjoyed and stayed awake.